Hey guys, today I'm going to change out the front brake pads on a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta. Stay tuned. Okay, if I'm not working on the rear of the machine, I set the emergency brake. Now some might call it suspenders and a belt, but I always chalk the rear wheels. Okay, the next thing I do is I check the fluid level in the master cylinder to make sure I'm not too high. And I don't want to be too high because the fluid level will rise when I push in pistons and I don't want it to leak or overflow. So if I'm a bit high, then what I do is I drain some out with this turkey baster so that I don't overflow. Okay, next step, pop out the hub cap. Okay, next step is to loosen off the lug nuts. And of course, you just break them loose so that when the wheel's in the air, it's not hard to get them undone. And of course, you don't do the whole thing off. You want to use jack stands on both sides when you're doing this kind of job. I'm let the jack down. I'm going to leave the jack in here just for extra safety. Our next step is take off both wheels. Alright, I want you to look at this rotor. This rotor is perfectly smooth. And really we have no divoting or ridging. I've had no trouble with the um, brakes uh, pulsating or pounding. I'll have a look at the other side of the rotor, but I'm going to retain this rotor without uh, either resurfacing the rotor or replacing it because I think it's good. Okay, as you can see, this is the FS3 caliper that we have here. And this one's a little different. It doesn't have a carrier that bolts onto the steering knuckle. Rather, the caliper bolts directly to the steering knuckle, so you've got two fewer bolts. I'll show you okay, that. Okay, this is uh, the left wheel with the steering wheel turned far to the left. And here's our caliper here with the brake lines coming in. This is a bleeder port here. And there are two bolts here, and they're both under these caps, so you just pry these caps off and you get at them. And uh, underneath is an Allen key, 7 millimeters. And so we're going to crack that Allen key to loosen the caliper off. Okay, while you're at it here, it's worthwhile having a look around. The boot looks to be okay in the steering knuckle. Shock absorber, there's no leaks. On these new cars, we don't have any grease nipples. Grease. The ball joints look to be okay. Okay, coming around here, this is the outer aspect. There's the rotor. Here's the brake pad, and you can see that little narrow gap there is the remaining pad. So it was clearly time to be changed. That's about two millimeters, and uh, we'll have a look at the other side in a moment. Okay, the next step is you want to compress in the cylinder so that you can release the brake pads, because the brake pads are right now squeezing down on the rotor and they're not uh, permitting it to come off easily. So take this big C-clamp, put it on here. Make sure you don't pry on the, the brake lines. And then it should come easily. Yes. Okay, now I've loosened off the sliders. And so we'll just slide these out here. They, these sliders are really critical. We need to wash them off and put um, high temperature grease back on it to allow them to slide because it's a slider function that allows the whole mechanism to work properly. If this slider works badly, the brakes will wear unevenly with one side worse than the other. Take the slider out this side too. Here it is. And then look, once you've compressed the cylinder, it should just slide right off here. Now you can see this particular brake pad has an electronic device to measure the thickness of the pad. And so when the pad rears out to a certain uh, 
size, the, the warning will come on to in the driver's cab to tell you that the brakes are too narrow. Okay, now I'm going to put some um, lubricant on the back of the caliper to prevent uh, brake chatter. And you're supposed to put this on uh, a while before you put the uh, brakes on just so it has a chance to um, set up. Well, as is often the case, they seem to have the most trouble with the electrical connectors. This is the uh, connector to tell the um, car's computer that the brakes are low and it didn't trigger but um, I need to get it off and so there's the connector here and I've got to slide these two tabs back and then just try and wiggle it off. Okay so I did manage to slide it off and I'll just show you how I did that. I just I pried up on this tab here and pulled and eventually it just came off but I think there's a tab under here if you pull back on this heel you notice the tab right there pulls back and it just it was stuck in there and so this is the old brake shoe you can see I had some wear left over but it was certainly time to change it this looks like about three millimeters to me and then this is the new connector piece and I'll slide in my new brake shoe into that Okay, my next step is to squeeze back the wheel cylinder, make room for the new brake shoes. I've already squeezed that back in the ways. All right, now we'll slide in our new brake shoes. And of course, they slide in like this. Okay, nice and symmetrical. And then same thing with this side. I've used some narrow gooseneck pliers for this to pull in those tabs so the uh, shoe slides down into the, into the drum of the piston. Right, now I mentioned that the sliders are the most important part of this, so I just want to clean this all off. This is brake cleaner. Now I've cleaned my sliders off, and I'm going to lube them. This is Ultra Slick by Permatrex. It's specifically designed for this high temperature environment. I avoid lubing the uh, threads and just the slider element. I want to put a dab of this anti-seize onto the bracket right here. I don't want to get any onto the rotor. Sure, I'm not sure how important this is, but the manual calls for 21 foot-pounds for that particular. Okay, I took this connector off, so I'll put it back on. Of course, don't forget to uh, put the cap back on your master cylinder and recheck the level. You can see the level rose significantly uh, because of the thick brake shoes pushing the brake fluid back up into the master cylinder. Step. Make sure you pump the brakes a few times, get them pumped up because those wheel cylinders need to be pressed up against the uh, shoes and rotors to make sure you get good braking. The final step is the test drive. Okay, there we have it. We've just changed the brake pads and inspected the brakes on a 2001 Jetta. A couple of points I'd like to make. The first is that uh, if you have uh, 
equipment that's substandard or uh, inadequate, then you might really consider about uh, the thought of whether you really want to do this. In particular, I think it's really important that you have jack stands and that you take all these appropriate safety precautions like safety glasses and so forth. And if you don't have that equipment, you should think about getting someone else to do it. The second point I'd like to make is that this is um, almost a deceptively easy procedure um, in the sense that uh, putting in the pad seems easy enough, but the most important part of this is the inspection. So look carefully at the rotor, make that judgment as to whether you need to turn the rotor or replace it. Um, look carefully at the sliders and make sure that uh, the brakes are going to work properly. Uh, double check your work and make sure the brakes work after you're done. If you feel uncomfortable with any of those procedures, uh, maybe consider having somebody else do it for you because there will be a learning curve. With any new technique, there's going to be a learning curve and you have to make a decision as, as to whether you feel that you want to be on the end of that learning curve. Thanks for watching.